What's up, everyone? Well, lately I've been thinking a lot about the Pacific Bonsai Expo and whether or not I'm going to be contributing to the trees that are in the expo. And it's not up to me what trees are in the expo, but it is up to me to make sure that if I want one in there, that I get it ready. So I'm gonna take this Rocky Mountain Juniper that I collected, mm, I think seven or eight years ago, and I'm gonna repot it into a show container today. All right, well, I expect this to be a reasonably straightforward repot, and the reason is that uh, I put it in this growing container maybe three or four years ago, and at the time it already had a re reasonably compact and good-looking root ball. There's not going to be a huge angle change. I think I'm going to basically tilt it up and forward a little bit like that, uh, so that'll be relatively easy to accomplish during the repotting process. And so otherwise it's just refreshing uh, the topsoil because there's a lot of roots that are actually right here along the surface, which means the tree has kind of pushed itself up a little bit over the last couple of years. And other than that, I'm just gonna have to kind of whittle down the root ball enough to fit it into the new container. All right, I've gone ahead and cut three sides, two long and one short, and then just kind of uh, gently nudge it out of the container here. The root ball is relatively solid, as I expected. And if I flip this over so you guys can see the bottom of the root ball, there's some nice root tips growing here. So I'll check this to make sure that there's no sections of dead root, um, which I'm not really expecting. And based on the vigor of the tree, it's pretty, pretty solid. So I'm seeing lots of nice distributed growth here, lots of strong tips extending over the past year. And so the roots kind of mirror that and show us nice, healthy root mass. All right, so I'm gonna tip this off the side of my table here because it has some nice gin and I'm gonna find myself a handle, usually like something that's relatively solid, like uh, a large portion of the lifeline to hold and then start working on the bottom of the root ball. And I'm gonna keep the, the bottom of the root ball reasonably, pretty much just perfectly vertical like this uh, so that I can easily track how much I'm taking off of, of each portion of the root ball without uh, causing too much trouble for myself. Basically, if you maintain the root ball at a with a flat bottom on it, you will make it easier to maintain the tree anchored in the container, or you'll make it easier for yourself to firmly anchor it in the container at the end of the repotting process. So as you can see, there's a ton of big, long circling roots here, which is fantastic. It's just a sign that the tree has been growing well and that it's devoting a lot of resources to building up strength. All right, with this all combed out and trimmed short, I'm gonna go ahead and lay the tree back down on the surface flat so that I can comb out the top and the sides. And I've gotten down to what looks like either a block of wood or a previous cut. I guess it's a block of wood. I don't remember putting that in there. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter. The pot that I'm planning on putting this in is a little bit narrower front to back. So I have about an inch here that I can remove before I get up to this piece of wood, but there's a lot more room back here. And so I'm just gonna comb out this side gently and mostly leave this intact 
uh, in terms of <clears throat> the interior of the root ball and then work on the back side in order to make it fit into the new container. So as I do this, I want to make sure that I'm combing off any sort of matrix of roots and soil and organic matter, weeds, anything like that that's on the surface of the soil and just refreshing the top of the root ball as well because that is what ensures that we get even water penetration into the soil mass and that all of the roots throughout the entire container are contributing to the health of the tree. If you have sections of soil that that block up on you and that shed water, which it wasn't really the case with this tree, but I was noticing that the, the matrix of roots on the top was getting a little bit dense and kind of not shedding water, but looking like it was getting ready to shed water. I find I have more problems with pine trees than junipers on that front, but it's kind of interesting that there would be a difference species wise. One of the things that Jonas and I have talked about in some of the episodes of some of the videos that we've had on this channel, as well as the Bonsai Wire uh, and Jonas's blog posts, is that the, the trees that we want to see for the expo, really, it's, it's hard to define what a good bonsai tree is. And, but when we see a really good bonsai tree, we know that it's a really good bonsai tree. And I think that Jonas actually came up with one of the better descriptions that I ever heard, that I've ever heard, which is basically that we want to see not just, we want to see not just like the core, really good structure, like a, a interesting piece of collected deadwood like this tree has, but we also want to see the quote, accrual, uh, accrual, that's a difficult word to say, I guess, the accrual of time-based techniques. And, you know, so that one sentence has a lot of components to it. I mean, if you really think about time is going to pass, it, say you've been doing bonsai for just a long time, or you've been doing it for just a year or something like that, the, the plants show a different character. They show a different quality in their growth and uh, behavior based on the technique that you use. And the techniques that you used, say, if you've been doing it for a long time, the techniques you used five years ago have an impact on what the tree looks like today. Even though maybe the technique that you use, you're using today is different, the techniques that you were using five years ago might have an impact. And especially in the case of trees that you're building long-term, um, as opposed to a, a collected juniper where you're kind of using the foliage as a frame around the, the picture of the, the deadwood that you found in nature. Um, if you're building the tree from scratch, like I do, and like, like we go over in a lot of cases on videos here at Bonsify, that work that you put in years ago is gonna really show, and whether that's just a bend in a young pine tree or um, the right trimming technique in terms of, you know, a, a maple foliage or anything like that. And so over time, you, you begin to see the, especially once you've had your eye has been trained a little bit, you begin to see the work that went into something, even though you, you didn't see the work happen, you see the result of the work. And, and seeing the result of work that has happened repeatedly over years and years and years worth of effort is I think the, the highest point that we can get to in, in bonsai. And we really see that in high level shows in Japan and we're starting to see it in high level shows in Europe and the United States. And it's really kind of exciting um, to, 
to get to witness, you know, people who really understand how to work on trees uh, and, and see the result of the techniques that they're using. So you might have noticed while I was doing that that there is a little bit of old uh, mountain soil here in the back. I'm not too, too concerned about getting all of it out, but I am taking some of it out, uh, <clears throat> mostly because I'm planning on whittling down the back of the root ball there to make this fit into my show container. No surprises uh, so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside, clean up the table, and then get the pot ready. All right, before I prep the pot, I actually wanna test fit and see <clears throat> what this is gonna look like. Looks like I've got it just about right in terms of fit and it'll just be a matter of positioning it at the angle that I want. So this pot is a little bit uh, special. It's a pot that I made back in 2006 and I haven't done any pottery really since then. But uh, I really like the idea of pairing a, a tree that I collected off a mountain and created a bonsai out of with a pot that I made uh, myself. And so it really kind of, really kind of embodies uh, my approach to bonsai, which is not necessarily to do everything yourself, but to but to really think about pairing at this level uh, the container and and really making it meaningful for yourself in a way. And if you if you kind of construct that story, it's really interesting to share with people your journey through bonsai. So that's one uh, option, and I I think I I really like it. I really like this pot. Um, it's a little bit dusty right now, but uh, we'll clean that up. And I think it works okay for the tree. You know, like a, a completely straight-sided pot like this is maybe not uh, a perfect match for this tree. And so let's, let's try one other thing that I found. All right, well, this is actually not a bonsai pot at all. It's uh, steel and I have no idea what it is, but one of the things that I like to do when I'm traveling is just stop by antique stores. And I found this in an antique store in South Dakota. And when I asked the owner of the store what it was, they kind of looked at me and they said, your guess is as good as mine. It's basically uh, eighth inch thick steel. It's got these really beefy handles on the side and then it's got like holes little holes down here at the corner and so it's not like it's a, a water trough I, I really have no idea what it what it originally was but I kind of like the the color and patina that it has on it and it the story here would be basically that you know I when I was traveling I came home with both of these things and one of them is alive and one of them is just sort of historical, but uh, it, it, I thought of it as a pairing and I kind of, I kind of like the idea, but I'm also a little bit, uh, I have a little bit of trepidation in terms of growing the tree in this container long-term. I also think, unfortunately, it's just a little bit too big for the tree, uh, mostly this dimension, because front to back it's fine, and I think the height uh, here, the visual weight of this mass is actually fine as well, and it's really just, uh, if this was like an inch or maybe just like an inch and a half shorter, uh, it would be, it would be <laughs> a better container. As cool as this thing is, I think I'm going to hold off for now in terms of using it and go with my, uh, other slightly more traditional option. Whenever I'm using a pot, I always look for the tie holes that are closest to the outside because if the, if the wire comes up from the center and then goes out and back in around the root ball, it tends to provide less uh, leverage in, and it's harder to stabilize the tree. Whereas if the ties come from 
closer to the corners, essentially, you have a much stronger strapping mechanism. And in this case, because the RuPaul is already established, and I'm not going to be using any sort of weird props or anything like that, uh, it's just basically going to be tied. I'm going to be settling the tree onto a mound of soil and then tying it down, and that'll provide a firm, uh, a firm attachment to the container. Now, this container, because <laughs> I am not an expert potter, is definitely a little bit handmade looking. Uh, I texturized it, but as a result of that, I want to make sure that I'm picking the front of the, the pot that I like more. And there is a little bit of color variation, uh, basically because of the differentiation of one side of the kiln versus the other, or how it was placed in the kiln. So I think I, I like the, the effect on this side a little, bit, a little bit more than I like the effect on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as the front. All right, because I want to really lean the tree forward more, I'm going to do a little bit more root work on the back here, particularly on the top of the back, uh, so that I can slope down the roots in the back a little bit more gradually. And then I might take a little bit more off the bottom in the front. So when I test fit a tree into the container, I'm looking to see if it is actually lower or if it, it can go lower than the point where I actually want it potted because I need to put a layer of soil underneath the root ball. So the the height here is actually about right. So I'm gonna, I, but <laughs> I think I might actually, I'm gonna pot it a little bit higher than I normally would, not much. Uh, but because this, this root ball is filled with good roots, I'm not too concerned about, about whether or not some of them start to dry out here on the top a little bit more than they would have if the tree was sunk a little bit more. And I can use sphagnum moss, but if, uh, if I turn it to the side here, it give, kind of give you guys an idea of the, the movement of the tree. Basically, as it was potted, it was, it was about like that about maybe yeah, about that angle. And then as I'm going to pot it, it's going to be a little bit more like that. So having the top here, the, the apex come towards you really gives you a much more dynamic feeling in the tree. And then the other thing is that it was potted like this. I think it's going to come up uh, like sort of clockwise a little bit there as I tilt it forward. All right. So I'm going to put a, uh, some medium-sized Akadama lava and pumice mixture on the bottom here towards the front of the pot because I'm tilting it up in the back. I'm going to just have basically one grain width uh, of soil and then towards the back there will be a little bit more. I've built sort of a low mound of soil here and even though the tree is tilting like this uh, compared to its previous potting angle, I'm using this mound of soil as the sort of starting point. So because I'm tilting it from here, sort of forward like this and up like that, the, the top of the mound is kind of offset here and I'm sloping the soil forward like that and a little bit off to that direction, but I might have to fine tune it. The key here, because I've left the, the bottom of the root ball relatively flat, is don't pile up soil next to the, to the container wall. You want to put a mound in the middle that will allow you to kind of nestle the tree down onto the mound to ensure that the, the soil fills any pockets, any small pockets that are on the bottom of the freshly trimmed root ball. Whenever you're potting a tree, it's good to kind of take a step back, especially if you're potting it for an exhibit. And the foliage hasn't been arranged here. I need to come back and, and really tweak that. But I can do that after I repot the tree. But what I'm really paying attention to is the angle of the tree versus the pot. So now I have this, the top kind of coming forward more dynamically. Uh, that'll potentially involve a little bit of branch adjustment back here. Uh, but 
what I'm looking at that I don't really like is that having this piece of deadwood really up that high is kind of making the base look smaller. So the visual mass of the base is now this instead of this. And so I think I'm going to try to sink it down a little bit more and tilt it this way, just a hair, so that this piece is a little bit closer to the soil. Now, I think the other thing that I could do is just to fill this visual mass somehow, uh, or fill this little gap here somehow to, to give it more visual stability. But I think just a slight adjustment is going to make it better. All right, I think that adjustment was enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in. I've got a little pigtail here, which is just an extra piece of wire, and I'm gonna do a full loop around the root ball. This will provide the tie point for the last portion of the loop. With it solidly tied in, all I need to do is basically add soil to it for the time being, and then I'm going to revisit the foliage uh, later in the spring and touch it up at that point. I forgot that. In order to enter this, I need to shoot a picture of it, which means that I'm gonna to need to touch up the foliage. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this and set it out on the bench for a day or two and then come back. So look for another video soon on getting this polished up and ready for entry into the Pacific Bonsai Expo. If you're interested in entering a tree in the Pacific Bonsai Expo, you can submit your, your entries to the jury now and uh, we're receiving submissions every day. Basically, you just need to shoot a photo or a couple of photos, depending on the type of tree, and email them to pacificbonsaiexpo at gmail.com. And the more trees that we get submitted for the jury to evaluate, the better a show we can put together because it takes not only, you know, co collected mountain conifers, but it takes all kinds of trees to to make a really good bonsai show. So don't think that the tree that you have is not good enough because the jury might select your tree based on the, uh, the species and the diversity that is needed for a bonsai show. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you soon.